Good morning, Morgan, and good morning to any of Morgan's friends that have joined us today. In today's video, we're going to talk about data compression. Okay, what does that mean? That means taking your data and making it so it takes up less space on uh, your hard drive. Now, <clears throat> this might not seem like it's that important when you're going to see an example where we, where we shrink the length from 41 to 37. But when you're dealing with an application that is processing millions or billions even of uh, transactions, every little bit of memory and space you can save matters. Okay. Now, <clears throat> uh, not every this is going to be an everyday occurrence. You're going to have to be working for a big company doing a lot of data processing for this to matter. But you still need to know about it. Although for many of you, you might never find the need to do this um, in in your career because zipping and unzipping takes a lot of CPU time to do. Okay, there's always a trade-off between um, you know, the space and how much work it takes to do that. Okay? So you give it with one hand and take it away with another. Well, with that said, let's go ahead and read what the machine has to do, and then we'll go and see if we can figure out what they're talking about. Data compression. Common data archiving and compression formats are directly supported by modules including ZLIB. Gzip, BZ2, Wilsma, zip file, and tar file. Okay, all right, right. So, okay, so there's all these different um, libraries that contain a bunch of methods that you can use to zip or unzip your data however you want. And we've got all kinds of, uh, of options here. And uh, right now we're going to look at the zlib. Okay, uh, and uh, uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of options here, but um, don't even bother learning about, uh, I mean, really digging into this stuff until you absolutely have to. All right, and with that, let's go over to the program sample code and, uh, and take a look at uh, that over there. Okay, so here we are in the sample code. Let me just paste through it. Oh, look, it all fits on one screen. All right, so what are we doing? We're importing the Zlib library, okay? And we're creating a, a, a string object S. And this is the information we're putting into it. And B means something that has to do with the formatting, okay? Uh, so then we're going to create this object. And then we're going to look at the value of the object and its length. Then we're going to use the, the uh, zlib method compress to shrink it. We're going to look at the value and the length again. Then we're going to unshrink it or, un or decompress it. And we're going to take a look at that. And then we're going to look at this and what it does. And I don't know what, but it was in the example. So I threw it in there, but I'm not going to bother figuring it out because I know it's something, you know, uh, rare. Okay. We're just going to stick to the compress and the decompress for now. That's really all you need to know. Okay. All right. Well, with that, let's go run some code and take a look at the output. And here we are in the output. All right. So we created the object. And uh, there's the value that's in it. Uh, right. And then it's interesting because it had the B in front of it. Ah, oh, that B must mean something to somebody else. Okay, all right. So what I'm thinking is the anyway, let's go. So anyway, the bottom line is it's 41 bytes long here. Then we zip it, and this is what comes out. This is machine language when they try to display machine language, and it comes takes up 37 bits. So you save four bytes. Did I say bits? I meant to say bytes. Then we decompress it, and boom, it comes back. And then there's this CRC32 thing, and it returns this. I don't know what it means, and I don't care, and we're not going to bother with it. Okay? Because it's a distraction. Believe me. Anyway, with that said, 
We're done for the day. Y'all go out and behave today, and we'll see you in the next video.